Hey everybody, this is Chris Bucci, and this is a gigantic brown box. And what's inside this box is really exciting, at least for me. If you take a look on the side here, it says Stern Pinball. And above that, you'll see stamped onto the box, Transformers LE. Inside is a brand new Transformers Limited Edition by Stern Pinball and it's all mine. It is a dream theme, and you are going to go along with me as we crack open the seal and enjoy a brand new game added to my pinball machine collection. in pursuit. These are Transformers. In fact, these are figures from all different generations of the franchise. <sighs> this is what remains of my old Transformers collection. You see, I grew up with what is now called Generation One, which began in 1984. My earliest memory of getting a Transformers figure was Christmas 1984, and under the tree was my very own Optimus Prime. In college, I started to become a Transformers action figure collector. In fact, I had almost every single one of what is now called Generation 1 sealed, never opened. We have Blur, Smokescreen, Inferno, Poster Box, Hot Rod, Ultra Magnus, Boxed Megatron, Blue Streak, signed by Casey Kasem, the Insecticons, Devastator gift set, my sound wave in the box. This was the figure that got me collecting. I started off collecting for nostalgic reasons, and then it went a little bit out of control. I had all of Generation 2 sealed, and I loved the Generation 2 line. I was really heavy after going to BotCon 97, heavily into Beast Wars. This is Waspinator. <laughs> and then about that time, I started to get out of the whole Transformers collecting thing. And then, about seven years later, Michael Bay was creating the first Transformers live action movie. And uh, I went to see it, determined to hate it, and when it was over, I saw it six times. So it brought the Transformers back into my world, and I became hooked all over again. I did not become a collector, really, but I became a little more of a fan. And as a result, I've loved the movie-verse. I love some of it, like the Transformers animated was really cool, Transformers Prime is awesome. And so I'm finding myself getting a little bit back into it, but it will never be as crazy and as heavy as it was during these years. I have some really, really cool memories of collecting. So why did I pull all this stuff out and share my memories with you? Well, because I think I wanted to give you an idea of where I am coming from when I go and I pull apart this pinball machine. Because you're not only talking to a pinball fan, you're talking to a Transformers fanboy. And if you ask anybody who is a fan of anything, they will tell you that they are the most dedicated, enthusiastic people in the world, but they're also the biggest pains and the biggest nitpickers in the world. It's tough to please a fanboy. And let me tell you something, folks. If Stern Pinball can please both this Transformers fanboy and this pinball fanboy, well, then that's double thumbs up to them. Okay, that's enough playing with little toys. Let's go open up a big toy and play with that one. This is actually my fifth new in-box game from Stern, and so far, none of the others have been destroyed during setup, so let's see if I can keep up that tradition this time. First, I want to remove a couple of staples and take a quick peek inside. <laughs> There's a game in there. And act like a goober. Not that I don't trust Stern, but this allows me to verify the correct orientation of the game before laying it down. 
Then remove the rest of the staples and open the flaps. Behind the warnings and setup instructions, you see the first real view of the game itself, and this is when it gets fun. I do notice that the coin door looks blank here, like there should be something there. Huh, I'll have to check into that later. Anyway, it's time to remove the packing material and each of the individual legs. The first real thing you get to see is the cabinet artwork, and my initial impression is it's pretty darn nice, with good representations of all the Transformers characters. Without the legs on the game, there really is no point in having a pinball machine, so let's get this thing on its back and begin the installation. I noticed that the stern cabinet decals here are cut around the outline of the legs versus along the edge of the cabinet. That is an interesting way to apply them, and uh, I hope it doesn't become a problem later on. Anyway, look at the gloss and color of these legs. Wow. Now to move the game into its brand new home. production originals, October 2011. Certificate of Authenticity. <laughs> Look at, I don't know if you could, oh, they did the, they did the plaque in split colors too. Can you see that? Look at the plate above the dot matrix. It's split purple and red, just like the game. And it's got a stamp right here, 229 out of 500. by Gary Stern himself, because he cares. Now to remove the game's keys off the plunger. And what does that say? Warning, do not use this ball plunger as a handle. <laughs> Who would do that? I like to go around and make sure all of the connections are solid in the back box. In delivery, you never know what can rattle loose. And then we have some packing material to remove from the playfield itself. Ooh, look at that back there. I don't remember noticing that. That's not on the other one. Let's lift the playfield and do some scrounging on the inside and underneath. Oh, I didn't hear anything fall. It's good news. Well, we've got a baggie with uh, an extra construction cart 
and a flasher. He gave us one flasher. That's nice of him. And then, of course, the manual. Uh, and it does not. See that? Terminator 3? There's none of that with this game. I kind of like keychains. I kind of like something collectible. I realize the whole game is collectible, but there wasn't even like a little keychain or, or extra decals. Like, my family guy has extra decals for the, the beer can and the spinners. Oh well, maybe we'll get something from Stern later on. Inside the coin box we have a couple of goodies including the balls and the tilt, which we will install right now. Yeah. And there's your tilt. Notice to the left of the tilt is the LE exclusive factory installed shaker motor. Let's do a quick once over of all the wires under the playfield. And then do the same for the top side. This is fine. It hasn't scratched, but they ship this captive ball with the with the character in the game and my, if somebody, my T3 was like that, and it actually scratched this. Luckily, everything appears to be fine, so let's unpack the balls, put them in the game, and get moving. Moment of truth, folks. Here we go. set up, the Transformers ambiance is set, and now it's time to dig in. But before we do, I think this would be a great opportunity to tell you about the different versions of this game that are out there. Now you have heard me say the words limited edition when I have been talking about my machine, and that's because it is an LE. But Stern went a little cuckoo and decided to release three different limited edition models. Not to mention the regular version of the game that you would find in the arcades. The regular version of Transformers, also called Transformers Pro, is sort of the standard model. In fact, it came out a couple of months before the limited editions. It's the one that you probably at this point will be putting quarters in in the arcades. It was not made for collectors, it was made for street use. Then you have the three limited edition models. The standard limited edition, or the combo LE, which is the one that I have, is actually numbered out of 500 pieces. The Decepticon Designer limited edition is numbered out of 125, and the Autobot Designer edition is also numbered out of 125. The differences between the three LEs are mostly just cosmetic, nothing mechanical or software, that's all the same. They're just mostly artwork changes. But I have to be honest, for my money, the combo LE made the most sense because the entire game is based around Decepticons versus Autobots. That's always been the point of Transformers. And so to pick a specific faction just didn't make sense. And to be honest, for me, I wanted both cabinet sides of the artwork to be different, just like the regular version. The Decepticon and Autobot designer editions have just specific faction artwork on both sides of the cabinet. Now, don't get me wrong. The designer editions look great, but for my personal collection, it was the combo edition all the way. Now, the differences between the Pro and the limited editions are a little bit crazier because the limited editions actually have more gimmicks, more mechanical items, and more software goodies than the Pro edition. Stern lately has been doing that for the collector. They've been making small runs of a game that has a few extra gimmicks. The Tron Limited Edition actually has neon lights on the ramps and a moving recognizer, which is really cool. 
The Transformers game is a little bit over the top with it because there are a couple of new mechanical items, there was a bunch of new software, there's LEDs in the whole game and a whole bunch of new stuff. So they really went overboard with the LEDs this time. Well, if you've been following this whole thing, I guess my point is there are a lot of versions of this game out there. And the one that we're going to be covering today is the one that I purchased, which is the Combo Limited Edition. Okay, I, that's enough talking. I can't take this anymore. Let's turn this puppy on and let's roll out. Okay, now we're gonna play the first game ever and see if the first impression of the gameplay is as good as the game looks. Um, keep in mind, I have not played any Transformers game at all. Not the Pro, not any other limited editions. So this is my first time ever. You notice it said version 1.0. This is the version that shipped with the game. There is a software revision coming up and a couple of other things. So keep in mind that some things might change as the game is uh, developed in the software. <sighs> okay, now normally I would go into the test mode and put everything on free play, but since there are coin mechs included with this version of the game, we're gonna do it the old fashioned way and we're gonna drop in some coins. All right, let's give the game its first play. Here we go. Ooh, that's a good start. There's a little noise from the movies. Let's put it on here. See, that's all, that's all the Transformers movie sound effects right there. And... Oh, Paramount logo, anybody? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start now. Um, also, I kept the glass off so that there isn't any glare, so you're gonna hear a lot more mechanical noises than normal, but uh, let's do it. Here we go. Time to press start. Ready? And... <sighs> Okay, so just like we talked about, you can choose between who you want to play at the beginning. There's Decepticons and Autobots. Um, I kind of feel like a Decepticon. All right, let's see what we got here. crappy way to end that first ball, so let's make this one worth it. <laughs> Here we go. Goes up in the lanes. Oh, a little more than meets the eye music there. All right, let's try Starscream again. Ooh, all spark. Before time began, there was the cue. Ooh, thank you, Mr. Cullen. Uh-oh. There we go. Gentlemen, the president is going to seven. <laughs> Got John Voight. Oh, boy. That was tough to get. Okay, we apparently started the Devastator mode, which I didn't even realize we started, so I'm not really sure what happened there. Let's see if we can lock some more balls in Megatron. Watching. All right, here we go. Ooh, nice. Yeah, I can't. It's hard to backhand that lock because. Here we go. Last ball. Let's see if we can make something happen. Well, 
iron hide, which I'm not doing. Oh, there we go. Now it's in a mini play field. Ooh. Oh, there we go. I want to try to keep it. Oh, I see. You want to try to keep it up where the blink lights are. Oh, nice. Okay, that's kind of cool. There is a... Let me hold the ball a second. I'm noticing if you just flail away at the buttons, the ball doesn't do anything. It just kind of goes like this. You've got to kind of time it to creep it up and hit the blinking lights. At least that's what it appears on first play here. That's kind of cool. I kind of like that. There's Star Scream. Finally, it's Star Scream. Let's see if I can come back. guy over here and he's zooming around to try to like do a good job because there's a feel that pressure but uh, I got some of the main things going um, mashing Optimus feels good the star scream thing is really cool I like the iron hide play field I mean I'm hoping they're gonna add something more to the rules because um, right now as it is it's okay um, I don't really have an interest in earning an extra ball or a special I'm kind of hoping there's gonna be some kind of game there Megatron is really cool he didn't shoot out the cannon like I've seen him do in other videos. I'm hoping it's just because it was the first time mine worked. But uh, the game looks great. It doesn't have any ball strobing with the LEDs. And uh, it makes me want to play again. So I think we might be okay here. So let's, uh, let's dig into this a little bit more. After a couple of dozen plays, I think we'll get a better idea. And uh, let's go. 